Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to go over in detail all of the different filters that are found in the Professional tab of Luminar 4. Real quick before I begin, I want to mention that I am an affiliate for Skylum Software. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to their website. I encourage you to try out their fully working free 15-day trial to make sure that Luminar 4 is right for you. If you decide to purchase it, use my discount code and you'll save yourself a few dollars on Luminar 4 or anything from Skylum Software. Now, the reason why I wanted to do this video is I think that many of us, when we process our images in Luminar 4, we start out at the top, right? We start out with the Essentials tab, and then we we'll might go down to the Creative tab, and then really by the time we get down to the Professional tab, our image is probably done. But there are a lot of tools available in the Professional tab that are very powerful, and they'll give your image a really unique look if you choose to use them. So I wanted to go over these in detail. We're gonna start right off at the top with Advanced Contrast. This just allows you to add contrast to specific tones in your image, the highlights, the midtones, and or the shadows. And there's really just two sliders for each of those tones. For example, with the highlights contrast, if I take that slider to the right, you'll notice it looks like it might be adding contrast to the highlights, but what often happens when you work any of these controls, you're gonna change the actual brightness level of that section, in this case, the highlights. That's where the highlights balance comes in. Moving highlights contrast to the right made the highlights darker. If I wanna bring back some of that brightness, I would take highlights balance to the left. So I'm bringing back some of that brightness, but you can see, in doing those two sliders, we added a lot of contrast to the highlights. Midtones contrast, same thing. Take this to the right and you'll add contrast to the midtones. You can see the trees and grasses out here in the distance are getting a lot of contrast added to them. Doesn't seem to be affecting the brightness level of those, but if it did, I would move that midtones balance. Then shadows contrast would be these darker parts of the scene. If I move that to the right, it will add contrast to the darker parts of the image, but in this case, it seems to be making them lighter. So I wanna to go to shadows balance and move that to the right and bring some of that darkness or some, you know, bring, make them a little darker there. So really powerful filter right there. I'm gonna just reset it. We'll go down to the adjustable gradient. With the adjustable gradient, you actually have two gradients per layer. You have the top gradient and the bottom gradient. For instance, by default, as soon as you open it up, you're on the top. And if I go to say exposure and start bringing that down, you can see how it's making the top darker. Now I could set the orientation of the gradient by clicking on set orientation, then come over here. And when I'm over the image, you'll see the overlay becomes active. And if I go right in the middle on the button, I could move it around. So I could move this down. I also could adjust the rate that it uh, will uh, affect the gradient itself by moving this individual arms. If I go up to the top, I could push it up and you can see how it's moving the middle one and the top one, or I could pull this one or pull it down. Again, I could reposition it. I also could tilt it. If I just come off the middle slightly, you'll see you'll turn into this double curved arrow and I could tilt it. So once you're happy with the way you've oriented the gradient itself, now, you could just click on set orientation again to turn that overlay off, and then you could adjust your gradient. Then if you wanna adjust the bottom part of the image differently, go to the bottom, and now this part will only affect the bottom of the image. And it still uses the same orientation we had. So we really have one gradient uh, overlay, and above it is the top, and below going down, is the bottom and you could adjust them independently one, one another and you can see you could do exposure contrast shadows highlights warmth and vibrance i'm just going to reset that so the gradient's a very uh powerful tool to help you uh, better adjust the color and tones in the either the top and or bottom of your image now dodge and burn 
really straight dodging and burning of an image. If you have specific parts of the image you want a little darker or a little brighter, you could use this. So the way you would do it is you could click on Start Painting. Then up here at the top at the Tool Attributes, you would start here. And let's say I want that beach a little darker. I would click on Darken. And I want to show you something first, which is a mistake, all right? So I clicked on Darken. And I want to make the beach a little darker. So I'm going to just brush on the beach. And I think actually it looks pretty good. All right. I kind of like what it did. Okay. So it added a little more tonal variance to my image by making that beach darker. But I want to make, let's say, the water a little lighter. So what you would do then is you would click on Lighten. All right. Then what you would do is you might start painting here. And you can see some other tool attributes. The size of the brush. The uh, strength of the brush. And there's a reset button there as well. Now, if you come in here and you go, oh, whoa, wait, that's way too bright. Well, you could come here to the overall amount slider and take this down. And this is the mistake a lot of people make is when you're moving this, it's going every brush stroke you did, the parts you darken, the parts you lighten, the overall amount will affect them all. So you can see how it's affecting the beach as well. So the proper way to use this filter is click on start painting and I want to darken that beach and I've determined that a strength of 50% is pretty good for the beach. But for the water, when I click on lighten, I want to bring that strength way down here, like maybe like 6%. And then I could brush in and brighten up the water. And it's a cumulative uh, effect. So I brushed once, I added 6% strength, and I could brush again and add a little more, and brush again a little more. So really the proper way to use this brush is to keep strength low and then use multiple brush strokes to add to it. So that's Dodge and Burn, very powerful tool, again, in the Professional tab of Luminar 4. Color Enhancer. This is actually four different filters in one. You can see at the top we have Brilliance and Warmth, then we have Color Contrast, then we have Split Color Warmth, and then if we click on Advanced Settings, there's Color Balance. Now, Starting at the top with the color enhancer, the brilliance is really like a vibrant slider. Those of you familiar maybe with Lightroom, you know there's saturation and vibrance. Brilliance is more like vibrance. Um, it just, if you move it to the right, it's just going to add saturation to your image. And if you move it to the left, it's going to take some of that saturation away. If you move it all the way to the left, it's not quite black and white, but it's almost. So it pretty much is a vibrant slider. And then with warmth, you could add more warmth to your image by moving it to the right, or you could make your image cooler by moving it to the left. Now, color contrast, um, it just kind of enhances the individual colors in the image to give more contrast between the different colors. If I move the amount up, you could see how it's kind of making the yellows more yellow, the blues more blue. But then you could actually then kind of shift those hues by moving this slider here. So you could really get a unique look with this uh, part of the filter, the color contrast uh, part of the filter. So that you'd want to experiment with, and that would be different for every image because the tones are often quite different in every image that you process. Below that is split color warmth. This is one of my favorite uh, sliders. You could take the warm tones in your image, and if you take this slider to the right, you'll make them warmer. Or you could take those same warm tones and move it to the left to make your warm tones cooler. It's not affecting the cool tones. The cool slider will do that. This is the coolest slider in Luminar 4. <laughs> if you take that slider to the right, you're going to make those cool tones warmer. If you take it to the left, you're making the cool tones cooler. So this is really a kind of a unique slider and I, or a unique tool. And I do like this one a lot and I use it quite often. Now below that is color balance. And this, those of you familiar with uh, Photoshop or Affinity Photo, this is really the straight color balance where you could affect the, um, the primary and secondary colors independently in shadows, midtones, and highlights. For example, uh, red and cyan are, are primary secondary colors. And if we take it uh, here in the shadows, let's actually, let's jump down to the highlights and start more highlights in the shot. If I take this to the right, you can see how it's affecting the colors of the highlights. And if I move it to the left, it's affecting the color of the highlights. Specifically, if I move it to the left, it's making the highlights more cyan. If I move it to the right, it's making them more red. And you have those 
uh, then controls for magenta green. Again, only in the highlights because I'm in the highlights tab and yellow blue. And you have that then for the midtones and the shadows as well. This isn't a filter I use quite as much, but if you um, have a color cast in your highlights, shadows, or midtones, you could use this to get rid of the color cast quite often. A lot of times, for example, in the shadows, you may have kind of a blue tone. Uh, so if you do, take this slider at the bottom and move it to the left a little bit and you'll get rid of that color cast. Similarly, if you have any other color cast anywhere in the highlights, midtones, or shadows, just do that. And that's where that uh, really comes in handy. So that's the color enhancer filter. The photo filter, it's as though you had a filter on your lens, a specific color filter. And by default, it's going to have saturation at 100. Uh, that just helps you better see the color at first. And the way you would use this is, uh, let's say I want to just add a warm filter to this, a yellowish filter. I would then just take a uh, mount to the right. Now I could see the color. It's obviously not yellow. So I could move it towards yellow. And then I could bring a mount down. I could bring saturation down. And then you could adjust those top two uh, sliders, the amount or the the two on the outside, I should say, the amount slider and the saturation slider, uh, to get the amount of photo filter effect you want applied to the image. So again, um, those of you familiar with Photoshop, this is pretty much the same thing as a uh, photo filter in Photoshop. And the preserve luminosity, a lot of times uh, when you turn this up, it'll look like you just painted it on uh, and you're making some of the tones that were bright darker. Um, just click on that and it will preserve the luminosity and you won't have that look like you're just making the image darker by putting a like a film over a color film over the image uh you know cellulose color saran wrap over the image you could preserve the luminosity there and finally we have split toning and this is just the classic split toning that you'll find in other applications uh you have highlights and shadows so you could tone the highlights one color and color tone the shadows a different color. And kind of the most popular tone is a yellow um, for highlights. So you would go put the hue slider towards yellow and move the saturation to the right. And you take the shadows and put those more towards blue and you would move the saturation to the right for that. Now you could balance uh, with this slider here. Well, where what exactly is highlights and what exactly is shadows and where is that demarcation line? Well, you could move that demarcation line with the balance uh, slider. You could make it more so everything is shadow. So you see how we're, when I move it to the left, we're putting some of that bluish tone into the highlights. But if you want it the other way, go this way. And we're starting now, when I go to the right, put some of that yellow tone into the shadows. So that is what that slider does. And then, of course, we have an amount slider at the top. So you could kind of dial everything down or really make it a little more intense by pushing it to the right. So that is split toning. So again, I feel a lot of these uh, filters that are in the professional tab are underutilized. And I think if you choose to use them, you could really give your image a unique look. And I hope this video helps you better understand what these filters will do for you. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.